Dear viewers of Good Investing Talks, it's great to have you back at the podcast. Uh, today, I'm having Pear Brilliant of VNV Global back from Stockholm. How are you doing, Pear? I'm, I'm, I'm good, thank you. How, how, yeah. That's great. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm good, too. A lot of work uh, this autumn, but uh, I think we feel the same uh, as we already said in the pre-talk. Um, Yeah, um, Pear, uh, it's interesting to have you back. Uh, it's it's also great that you came because for you as an investor, it's not the like the easiest climate right now. Uh, the stock is also like uh, down a lot from the peak. Um, maybe let's let's try to look back in the past. Uh, if you're running VNV for quite some time, and you have this this huge drawdowns, um, have they already happened in the past? And have you experienced something like this already as an investor? Yes, yes, I have. <laughs> uh, I, you know, a few times. It's a few times, yeah. Uh, I Like I specifically remember 98 and 2008, of course. But then in the midst, in the mean, between those years, there's a couple, you know, some volatile periods tend to sort of come and go. How did you like what was your framework to to stand this volatile periods and this maybe longer times of drawdown um as an investor well it's um i don't i don't really have a textbook uh, like you know th th this is what you should do <laughs> uh, but it's and it's always it's not fun uh, I, i and i think if you If you are if you are just too relaxed and you know then then maybe you're not uh, really in the right job you know when things go down <laughs> uh, and then when you're in this volatile period I think it's uh, it's okay to think it's tough and you have to sort of um, but and and I certainly do and uh, and it's not um, it's not uh, and it's in the same sort of manner as these other times but uh, but I think um, I mean. Now, like before, I believe a lot in the portfolio uh, that we have, and so uh, so that gives me confidence that um, you know um, it may be sort of a little bit stormy outside, but uh, if you believe in what you have and what you do, then I think uh, you know you have to just press on basically, and things will turn as they always do. It doesn't feel that way <laughs> when you're in sort of the dark, uh, but you know what's it's always darkest before dawn. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, but, but there's no, uh, there's no, um, you know, what, what I would say, uh, and this is, of course, you know, we find, uh, we at, I, we at VMV find ourselves in not this position, but when, when, uh, when you're in the business of investing into uh, risk, taking risk and, you know, like we are, then, uh, it's, um, It's better not to have leverage <laughs> when you go into these sort of uh, downturns. Uh, of course, we do have leverage now, and and that's uh, something that we work with a lot, uh, and uh, and intend to sort of delever and, and and pay back the debt we have. But it, of course, if if you sort of enter into a downturn without leverage, you're much much stronger. So that's a good, that's that that's 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 an easy, easy one to have on the to do list. One thing you had um, in the portfolio got lost, uh, Babylon, and we talked about it uh, in a wide uh, range in the last interview. So I want to do a follow up on this. You've already written a bit about it in like your Q1 or Q2 letter uh, where you did analysis. Uh, but maybe let's do a follow up here too. Um, what went wrong with Babylon Health? Your yeah, ba in it? Babylon was uh, didn't have the right sort of characteristics to survive this very sort of severe turn in the cost of capital uh, and uh, you know with the benefit of hindsight should have been without leverage <laughs> uh, and also uh, much more focused on stability uh, than taking over the world if one sort of uh, talks about it at a very very high level then there's lots of details uh, but but that's the essence of it that it's um, that it went it went into into this sort of different climate of markets uh, with way too little protection for those rainy days uh, and, and, and was uh, much too much uh, uh, in need of, uh, of uh, call it cheap money or 
a low cost of capital. And then when the cost of capital normalized it, it, it didn't have enough sort of staying power to sort of get its, get its, uh, its company in order. The product, I'm sure, I mean, or it will, is the future of healthcare, uh, but it's just not, uh, it wasn't possible for this sort of format, this company to, to see it all the way through. So as a shareholder of Ian, we Babylon is really a zero. There's nothing zero, even in the future that might no. uh, come back no. uh, through processes well, or something like that. That's in the this. past. That's 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 a, a total write-off. What did you change based on this experience? Well, I tried to sum it up in our Q two. Was it? I, I, I well, different things is that it's okay to lose money. Uh, when you, when when you're in a growth period, when you're building the company, but it's not okay to sort of hemorrhage money, as I think is the way we phrased it. So you have to sort of be still mindful of that your that your that your losses are within reason, and you cannot fund those losses with debt. It's also very important. Losses like that should be funded with equity. Otherwise, when market turns, like this time around, the debt holders will own the company. Um, other things that are uh, important here is that uh, for, for as, you know, at the, at the company level is also that uh, governance should be more straightforward. Accountability is very, very important. Now, there's, this, is, this, is, this is nothing, you know, the, uh, I, I'm not insinuating that um, anything sort of evil was done here. But, um, but I think it's much, much better situation when there's one share, one vote. We have still have things out there, but Babylon was had super shares for the founder, which which was not helpful in the end. Um, and then I think the, uh, the, the we invest a lot into founders and try to give them support to to build new products and new companies and and etc. But it's it's we have to be more mindful, and this is not easy, but to sort of have the trust of the founder. So that the founder f- understands when it's the right time to step off and leave the keys of the company to a CEO. Um, you know, a lot of you see a lot of emails signed signed by founder and CEO, which now it's 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 a, that doesn't work. You can't be founder and CEO. The best if your founder becomes a CEO, but then he understands that he or she is not a founder anymore. You can't write founder and CEO. It's a different mentality. It's a different mindset. It's a different risk taking, building teams, listening to people around the table, etc. So, so that's that's one another very important thing. And then, then I think also for for us lot here at at VMV, um, you know, B- Babylon again. I I mean the, the the product that they have built, I think, is the future of healthcare. We will, we will all use that kind of product in the future, um, but. Um, they were a trailblazer. They were the first ones out there, uh, and uh, and then you don't know exactly. It's difficult to know, is you know how this will work, um, and uh, and um, like when we built or were part of building uh, Avito in Russia in, in the classified space, this became a very large company. But we could always look at you know how this business model worked elsewhere because there were other people who had done the trailblazing. So when when you're in trailblazing mode it's we 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 don't have we we need to sort of manage how much we put into these sort of risk situations uh and and uh, with the benefit of hindsight we of course uh, i i invested too much into babylon i believed in it a lot i was wrong um and in the future we need to cap how much money we put into these things where we don't quite know uh how 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 the future looks we want to do those investments because they of course provide. They have the capacity to provide sort of a um, an, an extra large upside, uh, but um, but you know then with Avito, what was that thirty four times the money? It's enough upside. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think you see what I mean. So there's a couple of learnings like that, uh, both for how I run V and V and how you allocate within the portfolio, sort of to to we i mean we are about taking risk and we do that but to take uh, some kind of risk we need to still cap and then also some some learnings on uh, around or, or, or you know some 
you know, if it wasn't as if we knew it before, but some things to remember <laughs> on on uh, when you're present at the board level, for example, uh, that uh, yeah, no debt, not too many losses, accountability, no super voting shares, um, and uh, and 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 try to help the founder become a CEO or or let or, or hire a CEO. I think those are the those are the the the, uh, the lessons, and then of course, you know, if you do take risk, you uh, you will lose some. You will. I mean, and then of course, it's you have to remember to 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 uh, you have to try to take risk again, <laughs> uh, and uh, and not uh, not not make it so afraid that you you stop. Um, that's that's another big lesson. Uh, so anyway, I'm rambling on. Um, I don't know. No, it, there's a good point to to ask further uh, about for portfolio construction at VNV. Like, is there now a rule implemented that you say, okay, with a certain characteristic, this portfolio position can't go above a certain threshold? Like, you la you have let things run, and it was a good experience with Habito. <laughs> you mentioned it, but uh, with some companies that aren't like that mature in their business model and where you can like have more certainty about outcomes how will you go about portfolio construction then yeah no so 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 with the benefit of hindsight it's always easier to trade with you know when you look in the mirror uh, but uh, you know i think the risk reward above them was still very investable but for our size of company we should have invested less money Uh, that that's the uh, that that's the lesson, right? And that and that and that and that's uh, that's something that I you know that's a scar that I'm gonna like it's gonna start to hurt <laughs> when I, and uh, and remind me uh, when we're when we're in the same situation the next time. Um, one thing that comes up in your conference calls and is the right refinancing of the bond. So you have two bonds outstanding. One is uh, covered by the cash you have at yes. the moment. Um, And you're already buying it back with a discount, which is uh, not the worst thing to do. But the other one, uh, there you're planning to sell assets, and you have like we see it saw it with rising interest rates that the prices of the assets you own is really tied to the interest rates that went up. So, looking at the bond, um, was it in hindsight too aggressive to allocate capital like that? Um, Or yeah, how do you would you weigh it? Yeah, so so one thing to 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 just to sort of remember is that we or we our financial strategy is not to have debt, right? We and we don't use debt as a way to sort of juice up our returns. We think we we have enough upside and return potential in the portfolio, sort of outside of of, of leverage, uh, financing it with leverage. Um, We used we we've used that as bridge as a bridge to an exit, sort of not to raise equity capital if we have some new investment uh, and instead bridge the funding of a new investment through through some debt, and then pay off the debt with an exit that we have high confidence in. Now those exits um, that we uh, had as the rationale to have debt, uh, of course, were. You know, did not materialize uh, because of this big shift in the market that we've had. So now we, now we have the debt um, and uh, have to sort of be more constructive and active around managing these exits. Um, and so yeah, we uh, so as you say, we have two bonds outstanding. Uh, one smaller one, which is due in June next year, and that we're we have cash and we're. We're, we're, we're buying it back in the market if if it, if it if there's some supply available and then a slightly larger one which is just north of 100 million dollars uh, which is due in January 2025 and, for, and then the intent is to pay that bond back uh, and and to do that we have to fund it and and the, and, the, and the plan is to 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 perform some exits in the portfolio now from a distance that may look like how how is that going to happen the, the the world is very dark and And it's you know uh, it it seems from a distance at least difficult to to sell uh, um, uh, assets, especially also if you have the view that our assets are are of a startup nature and not profitable. 
So two things there is that uh, 70% of our portfolio is now EBITDA positive, which is up from some 40% in the beginning of the year. So the portfolio is more, is much, you know, from a profitability point of view, it's much more attractive, I'd say. It's not that you have to fund it to live every day. Um, so, so that opens up uh, potential sort of buyers. And we also see uh, that there are some uh, transactions going on uh, within the portfolio names that are around our NAV. Our NAV is written down by, uh, not quite, but call it half uh, since the start of this turmoil to now. So the, so the NAV is down. Um, and so, the, you know, and, 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 and we're very active around this. So, so I'm, um, I'm confident that, that we'll be able to perform this over the course of the year that we have now. Um, uh, until the second bond is due. Can you give some examples for these transactions? Examples of what, sorry? The transactions you mentioned that are going around the NAV level? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not allowed to sort of go into details of, 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 of transactions because they are private companies and they are with, between two private sort of holders. They're not public. But... Um, Uh, until they are done, of course, <laughs> and so, 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 you know, hopefully there will be some transparency around those in the not too distant future, and then, and then, I mean, well, yeah, we're managing around that. So, with this experience, how are you thinking about your dependence on the capital markets right now? Um, like, you had the help uh, to grow with the help of the capital markets. Some of the companies like Babylon were possible with the strong growth also because they could take money for nothing um so to say but at the moment it's not a, like the the most pleasant place anymore um sh is there any way you think about in the future to come out stronger with a less fragile uh, setup well i mean i think we we can our plan is to continue like we always had is to sort of fund the work we do which is to you know to invest into very investable risk reward situations uh, with equity uh, so hence the focus of dismantling or paying down this debt now so that you can have the stability of a pure equity funded portfolio uh, and then um, and then go from there um, so so that's very much the uh, the plan uh, yeah and uh, but 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 um, Now, uh, given, you know, we trade at, you know, call it a 75% discount to our NEV, uh, then it's not, um, uh, th then it's, it's not possible <laughs> to use the markets to sort of fund investments into, into new investments. Um, I think, I think, I, I, I can imagine that part of the reason why we trade with this kind of a discount is because, is because we have the debt. So, Once, once that's behind us, then, then, um, then uh, I, 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 you know, we, we should trade at least more constructively. Um, but um, I think uh, it's a, it's a very, uh, our pri the pricing of our stock in the market versus the NAV, I think, is a very, very, very clean, <laughs> uh, or quantitatively sort of clear uh, picture that the markets are pretty much closed now uh, for new risk investments. I mean, uh, and, uh, and, and for us, for sure, you know, in good times and in bad times, we always compare a new investment to our own share price uh, because we always have the opportunity to buy, buy our own stock. And so, um, you know, right now, uh, I, I also literally see nothing that is as well, you know, attractively priced as our own stock. So even if we... Even if we had money, basically, it would be very difficult to motivate oneself to buy it uh, when you have the alternative of buying your own stock at a 75% discount. I see sort of stuff going on around, as we spoke about, around the NAV. But it's, it's um, because the, uh, you know, at that sort of, you know, we, we mark our NAV according to market. So, so say the market is, you know, is, is where our NAV is placed. But... Um, Uh, that's uh, that's not interesting for us because we have this alternative. Now we, of course, you know, as I think we've spoken about in the past, and and we certainly have shown a lot in the past. I think uh, 
you know, we, we have been very, very active in buying back our own stock. Now, also with the debt outstanding, we're limited to, to, to making dividends and doing share buybacks. Uh, so it's also a good reason to sort of to have that behind us as soon as possible, really. Uh, so that's the focus. One thing that we talked about the last time was also like scaling up the team. And that's also a topic of the past. Um, can you walk us maybe a bit through how you think operationally having the right setup um, for the new normal we have now? Yeah, we're, um, uh, we're, 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 we're back to, we're back to where we started now and maybe even more. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm right now all about scaling down the team. <laughs> and so uh, uh, we, 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 we did some changes as, as late as last week. Um, and uh, we, we were always, and, and, I, and I, I was a big advocator and, and a big believer into having a very small team uh, and then using our network to sort of when we needed help. Then when things got very active, we, of course, expanded the team to sort of try to, you know, in-house organize things. Um, and, of course, I'd say for the lack, you know, the markets being closed and us being much less active, uh, we didn't need as many people. But also because, you know, we compare our operating cost base to our NAV, but also to our market cap. And, and that relationship just was not good enough. So we had to reduce the team because of that too. And then finally, it's also good learning uh, for me. And that's that uh, it, there was good reason why I wanted to have the team small. It was, you know, I, I think it's more effective for an organization like ours if we concentrate on our investments instead of running people. So, so that's for all those three reasons. Uh, it's it's now we're now, now back to being a much smaller team again, and uh, I, th I think that's for the better. It's also programmed to come out stronger out of the crisis. And uh, yeah, yeah, no, our our uh, our opex is uh, is is going to be on a cash basis now. It's much much lower <laughs> than it was a, a year ago, um, and. Um, And, and on the cost base, that's very good, but it's also on, an, you know, being effective is, is also good. And then we use the network. We have a lot of people around us that we work well with and they like us and we like them and they, we know each other well and that are happy sort of to, to help us on a project or, you know, and it's just, uh, it's, um, it's, it's our old way of working, which we are, we're doing again. <laughs> So we talked a lot about uh, how VNV comes out of the crisis stronger. Uh, let's jump on the listing, uh, or not the listed, uh, the companies you invested in level. Um, what, are they do, what are they doing to come out stronger out of the crisis? And to where do you see a strength that might have surprised you one year ago, maybe, in well, the companies? All of the, all of the companies <clears throat> are coming out stronger because of the because they have all reduced the cost base uh, a lot. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, and that's part of the reason why you see, you know, from Q1, we had 45% of the portfolio being EBITDA positive to 70% plus now being EBITDA positive and, and, you know, continuously going in that direction. So, and, you know, companies are, they exist to make profit. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, the, 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 this is, um, This is a, a very, uh, very sound uh, development. Uh, you know that is forced upon people to control their own destiny. They have to reduce the cost so that they, you know, the money that they have is enough to sort of take them to profitability and how they're at profitability and and then yeah, it comes at the expense of some growth um, that you can't sort of grow, 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 grow. You have to, you can you have to grow with profitability basically. Uh, and so, so it, from that point of view, it's a much, much stronger uh, portfolio today than it was a few years ago. Um, and there's, there's, there remains a lot of upside, even with, you know, with the current sort of growth and the current sort of products uh, that these, these, these companies are doing. Uh, it's, um, there's, uh, there, there, there's an enormous upside. 
um, that we um, that I think will be easier for markets sort of to to take to, to you know now there's a lot of uh, the, there's not a lot of people looking at our part of capital markets now. <laughs> uh, you want short duration assets, and uh, you know, with uh, uh, with lots of visibility, because your visibility, market visibility, I feel is is uh, is quite uh, short now. Uh, so if you have something that has a little bit longer duration, it's you know the the analysis is just not being done. I guess that's the opportunity that you want to. You want to you you want to get involved when everyone else is 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 doing is active somewhere else, right? Um, but I feel it's but it's all it's all an, a normalization. I think now maybe uh, the visibility now is maybe for a month or six months. You know, two years ago we had the visibility of twenty years. You know, people were investing into flying cars. We, you know, you and I, we're not going to sit in a flying car for 20 years. But 20 years was the time horizon. Now it's maybe too short. You know, now it's maybe, uh, I don't know, less than a year. And then, in a, you know, in a normal, you know, when we get back to normality, uh, when we have sort of stability on what the cost of capital will be, I, it will be the normal three to five years, something like that you could look out. And then, and then you start to sort of pick up and, and look at these things again, which, which, um, and, and you will see a portfolio that's making money. <laughs> you will probably see that there is a, that VMV is a portfolio, which also has some cash flow, cash flow to fund up bank, cash flow to fund sort of new investments, which we've had from time to time in the past. We haven't had over this past couple of years, but with the way profitability is growing now, we, we certainly have that, uh, um, you know, th that will be the situation when you, when, you know, when you say, if you look at VMV when the crisis is over, <laughs> it's difficult to define that exactly. But uh, but yeah, uh, so I'm I'm very enthusiastic actually. Then we have a lot of companies that are small now in portfolio, but that will be much much larger. That will come out of the shadow, that are well funded, that are growing despite the sort of the market turmoil and that people just don't look at. But but there is there's there's a couple of those that that that, that are going to be. There are going to be big drivers for VNB, you know, for the longer term. You recently had the Capital Markets Day, uh, where people can also take a deeper look into some of the companies with presentations. But maybe let, let us both pick <laughs> three companies in the portfolio uh, that you um, that we do this or that you do the three to five years outlook. Um, maybe two larger ones and one of the not well-known names what names come to mind uh, of the two larger ones where you want to do like your perspective on the next three to five years well i think the two larger ones which are i mean there is is really blah blah car and voy technology voy technology so i mean blah blah car is now in a very very strong sort of macro tailwind right this is the 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 problem that they solve is is for you and I and two others to sort of share the costs of of, uh, of long distance travel, and uh, and uh, you know when times are tougher, uh, people are more prone to do that, and and uh, and so it's really sort of in a in a macro in a macro sort of tailwind, uh, um, uh, but it's but it's uh, and and during these sort of what they're active around now is to sort of expand. Uh, the platform to sort of pick up on other me means of transportation, whereas they started with us, you know, sharing a car. Uh, in what you know, we've had, we've seen them add buses to it, but we also see them being very active around uh, trains. And you know, uh, there will be probably be more to come after that. And then within these sort of different means of transportation. You, you used to only be able to do long distance. Now you can do sort of medium distance, not not you know uh, commute kind of distances and and uh, another another means of of, uh, of 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 if it's if it's driven by supply but it can also be driven by demand so it's there's there's uh, there's an enormous amount of work going on around the you know developing the product but the the base of this uh, is uh, is in a very strong sort of macro tailwind let me ask a follow-up question on blah blah car sure. um, how do you think about the growth there and 
the groundwork they have to do to lay a growing foundation. Because sometimes, and I talked with other investors about uh, Blah Blah Car, it felt a bit like they were a bit disappointed that it was more like a slow brewing, slow building thing and not like a hockey stick growth. So what is your so, observation of growth at Blah Blah Car? But we, you know, we are in the business of investing into network effects, right? Uh, which is very... Uh, which is essentially investing into companies that can sort of grow as high barriers to entry so that they assume the characteristics of monopoly. So we, that, we came to that through classifieds. And, 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 uh, but, but that's the common characteristics of all the things in our portfolio. But, but these things are not hockey sticks, and they will never be. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it, takes, it takes a long time. Uh, to to gr to grow the liquidity or the uh, the data whatever it is that creates the, the these very high barriers to entry once you've grown to a certain level then you can start to charge um, so it's like a flat flat in terms of revenue and as a financial analyst uh, we'll see flat 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 and then suddenly a big jump as you start to monetize and then growth so it never becomes like a hockey stick I don't know what that is it's something else <laughs> it's another curve um, but so um, when you compare it to for example uh, e-commerce you get much more hockey sticks right you you do some work and then you spend money marketing and and the thing sort of starts to grow uh, but what's what's hidden behind that you know ho hockey stick is that you have to fund it with marketing because barriers to entry are very low and you have, you know and it's brand and you have to fund the brand and you have to be very active so that's Hockey sticks. There's lot. There's more to the story than just the hockey stick. Here, it's that you, 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 uh, you have to sort of build liquidity. Supply is when when supply is small, demand has to be equally small. Then you can grow supply a little bit, and then demand can grow a little bit. But they always have to be matched. If you have too much supply and too little demand, then the supply won't get sort of. They it won't meet. You know, and then then it, the whole business model falls away. So it's by nature uh, something that, that grows uh, you know, at a, at a, at a, in, in a slow way. But once you have reached that sort of level of, 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 this, of big enough distance to your competitors, then barriers to entry are wonderfully high. <laughs> uh, and, and, and then it becomes very valuable companies. So, so, um, so, but, it, but, it, but for fin us financial analysts, you, it's, it's frustrating because you, you don't see it. Uh, you have to be com comfortable <laughs> to understand that uh, the value here is not being driven by revenue in the beginning. It's driven by liquidity in some form or shape. So and the same for Blah Blah Car. Blah Blah Car, in fact, is the, is the business model in my portfolio that's the most reminiscent of classifieds. It's now super fragmented demand offering into super fragmented um, you know, demand versus supplies, this is very high fragmentation on both sides of the marketplace. Get liquidity in the middle of that, and it's, I would, I would even say, unpenetrable uh, um, uh, sort of a bearish to entry. And so, 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 blah blah car is is very much in that situation. But what I was going to get to, and it's something that when when if we talk in a few years, right, and. What's 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 now very very strong macro and keep on getting stronger is sort of, you know, uh, is is of course climate and and different ways to sort of, um, to uh, reduce the, you know, dependency on energy intensive sort of transportation modes, or, and uh, and and these platforms like blah blah car and Voy, both have within them a, a very a very um, um, a very strong ability to be a tool to reduce uh, the the, uh, the, the um, energy intensiveness, or uh, you know, to reduce the dependency on carbon dioxide means of transportation, etc. And uh, in blah blah car, you see some of that already. In in Vo, you, you don't. I mean, people use it because it's a very uh, partly because it's a very efficient way to move around town. But it's also a very climate-friendly way to move around town, and uh, and uh, the um, the ability for especially politicians to use these platforms to to uh, to to drive um, behavior to more sort of climate-efficient 
well in this case means in this case means of transportation is is going to make these platforms very very valuable there's like a hidden value in them uh that they have they sit on this sort of toolbox uh that uh that is something that we're going to going to talk much more about in the in the coming years um, now we invested them into them because they are network effects the product that they deliver becomes m- better f- for every new user that uses that product they both check that network effect you know rule of thumb that we look for first and foremost when we invest but uh, but then and then of course they have the macro of mobility which is very interesting it's changing younger generations are you know are, 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 are much more prone to sort of use new methods of transportation. So that, that whole industry is changing and they're in the midst of that. But then what, pe- what we now forget is that there are also platforms to drive uh, people to a more sort of climate-friendly means of transportation. And, and that's a value we don't talk about today, but which will be much more present, I think, if we look a few years down the road. Let's come back to the point where I interrupted you. You wanted to make the, the case case so to say for voy in three to five years yeah so 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 voy is the uh, i mean i think everyone we talk to will agree that in three to five years the city you live in the city i live in will have less cars uh, people moving around the city the politicians everyone is on that track and uh, and and uh, when you think about it in that way that voy sits uh, on on the platform that now we only think about scooters and looks very competitive that there's a sc- scooters you know vo- voice already it's you know it's a profitable company it's uh, it's been able to sort of run its platform with scooters as the only product essentially the only product as mm. in a, in i did a, ride a bike two days ago in berlin right. so, so they also have bikes in some cities but yeah. it's, it was based on scooters and now it's developed into bikes but 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 only on those products well, two products, uh, it's, 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 it's been able to sort of run an efficient company that's making money. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that, that's what we have today, but that they, they sit in the middle of that sort of nearly seismic shift that Berlin, Stockholm, London, etc., is moving away from cars. Uh, then, then, then those platforms also be, will be, they're at the heart of that and they'll become more and more valuable as the platform to move around the city, not only on scooters, but then on lots of other things in the future. That platform business we, we forget about when we, well, we see, we see a voice scooter and it stands next to a Lime scooter and what's the difference. And, you know, um, so there, there it's, it, we miss the big picture of, of how important these platforms will be uh, for, you know, the cities we live in. Uh, over, over over three to five years also on that quite short time horizon at the moment a lot of like financial analysts might compare void to bird uh, lime tier whatever all the other offerings and see them as just like maybe because of this this low barriers to entry um as a business where you question like how did, can this be a good business uh or how one can win in this this game like how do you see the, the market in the in the scooter business um, and why is yeah. why your your winner so to say what are the factors that dra- make them the winner well um, it's uh, it, i mean the, 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 this sector got going during an era when 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 there was capital around to fund it right and so, uh, so you got a lot of people starting this uh, because, well, from a distance it looked like barriers to entry were low, and there was capital to fund it. Let's, you know, let's go. <laughs> but then, when, when, uh, you know, after a while, it became very clear that, you know, you need to sort of, if we if we put aside the network effects on this for a while, you also need to run this business. You have to make sure that these scooters are charged are safe uh, are parked correctly have the licenses from a city you know it's it's an operation uh, where uh, you have to run it very very efficiently especially when there is competition so so voy has concentrated enormously uh, to run this as efficiently as possible 
Uh, and I think it's now clear that they pretty much stand out as the most efficiently run operator of all of them. Uh, and uh, that has its background. The, the sort of the team that started it were basically came from sort of military sort of background and were sort of very very organized in 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 planning for all eventualities, etc. And so, uh, but but then on top of that, you have the network effects, uh, which is the fact that. Uh, these you will not take a scooter if it's not outside your door or a bike if it's not outside your door and it can only be outside your door if i have driven it there and parked it there it's impossible for these companies to sort of put them out you know perfectly from you know in the morning so the one who has the most users will be most spread across the city and the ones who's most spread across the city will get more users and more users get better spread and then you're in this spin so we see that in 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 uh, in, uh, in in cities where where Voy is that they have a smaller part of the scooters, but they have double or triple the size of the actual rides in the city because because of these sort of network effects. So in contrast to maybe blah blah car and classifieds, it's not a winner takes everything. Um, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, but it's a, it's it's more similar, I think you could say, to the Uber. Uh, industry where it's a winner takes most that the big one takes most of it and the big one is also typically the one that's best run uh, and less and least dependent on the, on the on 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 the, on the, on the funding environment uh, and and then you'll have some uh, uh, competition as well it's not it's not not so winner takes most um so uh, yeah, no, I'm a big believer in it. And, I mean, and then on top of that, you you know, it, it's it's just going to be a more and more important part of uh, how cities are run, essentially. Uh, you know, the concept that was, I think, was coined by the, the former mayor of Paris, that, you know, we're looking to live in 15-minute cities, that without the use of, of, of fossils, uh, the population will be able to go to work, school, hospital, shop, you know, uh, within 15 minutes and then these platforms are they, they they very quickly become at the heart of that of course you have to have metro and public transport as well but but um, the, the, these platforms become a very necessary part of that vision which i think is where we're all going you you dropped the idea that they might uh, add other categories like or other modes of transport not scooters but also bikes um is no, there no, any no, we they have it right. I think yeah. you said that you 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 rode a Voy bike, so they have electric bikes in some cities, not in all cities. Um, but I think um, part of what we talked about before being being efficient, they they um, instead of doing everything at once, Voy took you know the starting point that we should have a black belt in the one thing we do. So so only to. Uh, uh, to, 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 to do scooters extremely efficiently and let's become make that profitable and then go from there. For the longer term, I think these platforms will, uh, you know, like, a little bit like we talked about Blah Blah Car, will, gi will give you a choice to cars, scooters, uh, maybe even, uh, maybe even uh, Metro, right? I mean, basically become your, you know, your one-stop shop to get from A to B at least within the parameters of the city. Then you have Blabla Car on top of that to take you to to take you to Düsseldorf or wherever you're going. Dortmund maybe. Well, thank you for the insights into the two larger positions. Um, what is the smaller uh, company in the portfolio uh, that you want to do an outlook for the next three to five years? Well I think I think um, I have I have two that sort of a little bit stand out, and and one is a Swedish company called Alva, Alva, which is essentially LinkedIn 2.0. So you know the way we sort of match a job with a, an employer or or a job with a job seeker today is, is basically based on a CV. So LinkedIn does that quite efficiently. It sort of has the format of the CV, but a CV is quite a crude way in how to sort of match people. Uh, with jobs and and you know and, and people running companies with 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 uh, with, with employees, 
future employees. So Alva's product is basically, you could say, in a crude way, based on a personality test, uh, but in a, you know, in a very sort of digital format, uh, and it allows their computer to do the matching much, much better. Um, and so uh, you could see you see that essentially evolving into becoming the marketplace for the supply and the demand for jobs in the future. Sort of a, just a, a a new way of doing that. Uh, and uh, and uh, and so so they have set it's a, it's a rather young company. They are they're widely used in sort of in 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 here in the Swedish context, but. Uh, have ambitions that are that take them well beyond Sweden, first to Europe and then elsewhere. Um, Swedish founder and uh, and now the also a, a large owner, but also the CEO is the guy who used to run Avito in Russia. A Swedish guy uh, came from consulting into Avito, helped build Avito, then came home, did some investing for a while, and now uh, has taken his sort of operating. Uh, skills to sort of run this company. So I think uh, Alva is one of those. It's, it's, it has high network effects. It's a very digital product. Of course, you know, when uh, times are, you know, now people are not recruiting as much as they did maybe a, a couple of years ago. And, but, you know, the, the, the cycle always turns. Uh, so there will be some macro, but in the meantime, they're sort of very active on building out the product. So that's one um, I, I think will be a, uh, one that we talk much more and will be, you know, develop into being a large constituent of my portfolio. Another company we have uh, that I think also is is is, is uh, on on route to becoming a large part of the portfolio, especially if we look on a three year time basis, is an Israeli company uh, called No Traffic, which uh, uses the aggregation of data to manage traffic in a city, very much centered around traffic lights. So one, at least my view, my sort of perception, and I think many people share that, that traffic lights were, were quite sort of efficiently run. Uh, but uh, if you, if you, when, not, when you get closer to it, there's a huge potential to, to run traffic lights with the help of data uh, uh, and, uh, and then not only manage the traffic around the traffic light correctly, but do that across the city, which manages for safety, climate, uh, and lots of things. So, so this Israeli sort of group of of of, of uh, tech people have put together this company, which is now starting to get quite large uh, clients in the U.S. It's essentially a, uh, the U.S. is the starting point to focus. It makes a lot uh, of sense with their car focus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 uh, and uh, this is also a huge market. And, uh, and a company where, you know, if you get uh, the data sort of aggregates these sort of network effects and barriers to entry. So if I choose two among all my babies, and I like all my babies, but uh, these two, I, I, I would sort of think that they would, they would, they will be, um, they will grow up to be quite large contributors to the portfolio. What is Alva doing better than competitors? Because I think the hiring market is a quite competitive. You have ZipRecruiter, Indeed, whatever. Uh, why is Alva really like standing out? Well, it's um, I think the, the this method of um, of matching people to uh, jobs and the other way around is is it's in its um, infancy. This market, so the, you know, there there um, there will be others who probably build similar products, but. Uh, uh, their product is is uh, of, of of matching is uh, is proven strong. It's it's doing it in a small market and matching people to jobs and the other way around very efficiently. And then you know, like we spoke about before, it's you have to sort of you can't have a lot of supply that doesn't get matched to any demand, then it falls apart. Uh, here you start small and then you you grow from there. Um, and 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 then the product. Um, if the product doesn't match well, it dies, right? So this product matches well, but it has to has to sort of start small. <laughs> uh, I think competitors are uh, also the big ones are are come from a, a his, historical <laughs> world where it's much more matched based on the CV that I've done this course or I've had this uh, you know this work experience and. 
and then you know it becomes not a lottery because they add some value but it's you know you don't quite know here is like a much more complete picture that the the algorithm sort of understands and has and that can understand you know what Tillman, uh, you know your your exact qualifications from in in, in a much more sort of holistic way, uh, and it can understand that because it's done it so many times before, and then that data helps it become better and better. Uh, so it's 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 a it's a date. I, I see it as a data play. So you have to have the algorithm that matches well, but then it matches better and better on the more data it has. So how does the data then get filled in into this? So, yeah. well, they 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 go to V and V and they say, well, we'll do your personality test for your hirings, and then that gives them data, and then you know that helps them get go to Tillman Media Corporation, <laughs> and then it's, you know, you do your hiring, and then it it starts like that and it builds data. Okay, that's interesting to know. Um, let us jump back again to the. Uh, holding or the BNB level, um, how much room for capital allocation do we have at the moment outside of focusing on uh, yeah, paying or buying back the debt? Well, well, that's our focus. Uh, uh, but I always say that, you know, if we, if we find an investment that is, that, that is, you know, attractive enough, we, we we will we will we will find a way to do it right so uh we and in fact we we did have such an uh situation uh earlier this year before summer there was a there was a seller of shares in blah blah car that was not at all sensitive to the price they really needed to sell and so we um, uh, we basically felt that the pricing of blah blah car was attractive even to our own stock price. So we went ahead and we did that. We increased our stake in Blah Blah Car at a price that we thought was, was uh, well, it was, you could call it semi-distressed, uh, semi-distressed seller. Uh, and um, uh, uh, so even though the, the overall focus now, which I think is very, very clear from a short to medium term perspective for our shareholders that we take away the debt and then, and then uh, you know, just from the very quantitative way of a discount to an NAV, we traded a 75% discount. I think people who I think have a much less attractive portfolio than ours trade at maybe a 35% discount, right? So there's a big uplift from just moving on from that. Um, but then in the meantime, we, all, we, keep, we keep an eye out uh, for all new investments. We're in, you know, we... We have several sort of dialogues going on. We haven't found anything that we think is attractive enough, but that may change. Uh, how, so, so, yeah. How do you then measure this attractiveness? Like, is the hurdle that you make 50% IRR on a new investment then compared to the things you already know? Or you don't have to put out the number, but like, a rough framework to understand this this decision. No, the way we get paid, you know, we, there's a ladder, but essentially our shareholders are telling us that you will get paid if you deliver 25% IRR from an NAV basis. That I think we have the ab ab ability to do. And then, of course, we trade a 75% discount to that. Um, so, uh, so I, if you know, those are the very simple metrics from an NAV basis, 25%. IRR, uh, and then, but in the shorter term, we have this seventy-five percent discount to to deal with. Um, so, so those are the, the you know, the, the, those are those are the two very simple parameters that we work with. In your letter, you've also written that you look also to help the companies you own with capital allocation decisions uh, outside of like the 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 holding level. What do you do there? Uh, Maybe you can give one or two examples if you're allowed to speak about this. Yeah, well, the this would do from being present at the board. Uh, so, so the board typically is the feedback to the CEO uh, for uh, for for those kind of decisions, uh, and uh, 
and uh, and and of late uh, the, the 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 typical sort of capital allocation decision has been um, is it worth sort of raising money at at this kind of cost of capital to go for this much extra growth and typically it's been like no we don't that that becomes too expensive we will live without that extra growth because the cost of capital here is too high so we'll you know it's it makes more sense for us to stay with the growth we have and con- continue being profitable that's the that's the i think the essence of uh, of what capital allocation discussions and decision has been going on in the industry at large certainly in our portfolio and sometimes that works well and sometimes like in Babylon, it doesn't work well. I mean, I think we as shareholders were were skeptical of, of uh, uh, or at least sort of a little bit uh, um, nervous about them going so big in the US when they started. Uh, and they went and they did that. Uh, so uh, that capital allocation decision looked good for a while, but then it turned out to become the death of the company. Uh, you know when markets turn, um, so hence back to the to the need that one has to have one share, one vote, so that we we as capital providers, you know, have have a say in the capital allocation. So it's more that you now focus on, or I try to boil it down. You might correct me uh, that you focus more on uh, GARP approach, <laughs> growth at a reasonable price now with the with the thinking you do or is it like is this the wrong framework to no grow grow growth that growth you know we we don't need the companies to uh to throw off and you know it's different from company to company it's difficult to, it's, it's difficult to talk high level about every company is you know because every company is a little bit different some companies are in our portfolio are now getting into the phase where they will be dividend payers. They have growth, bearish to entry are high, earnings will grow faster than revenues, and the, and but it's not worth reinvesting into uh, you know all of the profits. So they will provide a profit back to us. In some other companies, it's it's maybe not worth sort of raising money because the cost of capital is high. Um, um, but we also don't need them to sort of make a lot of profit. So you can you can make you can make just profit and grow and grow grow at the maximum speed that you can under that, because there's still a lot of market share to turn to, to make, and then and then and then you can sort of start to raise money or be even more aggressive around growth when the capital cost the cost of capital becomes more reasonable. Uh, uh, at some point in the future um maybe for the end let's jump on the meta level with you or another level with your shareholders because i think uh, looking at the shareholder base of vnb there was a larger rotation uh, happening and with the new shareholders what are expecting they they are expecting from you compared if you have the chance to talk to them compared to the uh, past shareholders because for them it was more um yeah maybe that we might have been a part for their VC exposure in certain geographies and the new shareholders, what are they expecting from you? And could this allow uh, a different kind of setup at VNB? Maybe also thinking about paying dividends as a holding to the shareholders or something like this? Um, yeah, that, I th- I, you know, our, our largest shareholder has been the same now for, I see it's a close to a decade. So it's, uh, I think, uh, their view, you know, hasn't changed. You know, it's it's for you know we we you know they I you know I, I'd say that they own us to continue doing what we're doing, is to sort of be, you know be part of building companies with very high bearish to entry, uh, Avitos, blah blah cars, Voice, etc. Uh, uh, and uh, we have one new shareholder, which is uh, number two, which is nearly as large as the largest one, but 
and they have built their position since the summer of 2022, essentially. Uh, so they started buying that, and now they own just under 20%. Uh, and also, and this is a Swedish family uh, who is um, who's been active, you know, um, you know, it's very active around the Swedish financial markets, both of them that they own one of the larger fund managers here in, in, in Scandinavia. And they also own the largest uh, stock trading platform, like the Swedish or Scandinavian version of E-Trade. So, the, so they are the largest shareholder of that. Those are the two sort of big ones. And, and now they own us uh, as well. And, and, and the family member there, the guy who runs that family, is also the new chairman of the board here. Um, but I think we, you know, uh, so the, the shift is maybe to sort of more of a family uh holding structure which is probably a little bit more lo- long term and a little bit less sensitive to the to the flows and ebbs of the market on the short term typically and and i think that they really built their stake from uh, sellers who are like you said are technology funds or you know um, uh, funds that are exposed to sort of the digital world in some ways but these funds have also are um, have uh, uh, fund investors uh, that have wanted their money back. <laughs> uh, and so they have been selling in the market to fund their outflows. So those outflows have driven them to be sellers and they've basically gone into the hands of, of family families who, who, who see, of course, that this is uh, now we're in, you know, now there's a shift in cost of capital that gives a rise to opportunities. But of course, you know, we're still in this, world where the, you know there will be a lot of more digital transformation to be done and if you can sort of be exposed to that within the concept niche of these very high barriers to entries that kind of business model that that sort of that combination is very interesting uh, i think we're all in agreement uh, that um, of the financial strategy we have that which is not to fund this with debt, uh, and um, and uh, and so so we're focusing on, on taking out that debt. Uh, of course, we uh, I think we're also in agreement that it would be very good to have one of our companies evolve into a dividend payer, a little bit like Avito was the last years before we sold it, uh, and then then that you know like Avito I think we got thirteen million dollars in the last year we owned it, which funded both the opex. And it funded our first ticket into VOI, and it funded you know it it, it funded a you know it can fund both opex and then a, co- a couple of new investments, so um, that that's uh, that's more difficult to plan exactly when it happens, uh, but uh, I think we have a few good sort of cases in the portfolio that will develop into those type of situations for us over the next period here. That's just like a scenario and maybe we can talk about something clearer in the next interview we do because with this interview I have asked my questions but for the end I want to give you the chance is there anything you want to add we haven't discussed or you looking back at the interview find like interesting to outline again uh, I, I think we've talked about you know the, 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 I think we talked about blah, blah, car and Voy, which are, of course, two very important positions and then the, the various trends that they can build. We talked about some of the examples of the stuff that's going on in the portfolio that we never talk about. <laughs> and, and those, uh, those and, you know, in the same way that Voy was in the shadow of Avito, you know, Alva is in the shadow of Voy now, and that will change. Um, um, I, I, I think it's we do a lot of work and, and I feel very confident that we will be able to sort of, you know, uh, sell some assets and pay off our debt. That's not done until it's done. I know we've talked about that. So this is just me helping myself uh, see if there's anything we've missed to talk about. But I think that's the main reason why we traded a 75% discount to an NAV that's, you know, quite very, very fairly priced. I think is the right way to phrase it. Um, and um, yeah, and then, you know, we talked about four companies. We have called it 70. So we got another 66 to talk about, but that's, that's. Um, Maybe let's do a number of quick follow-up questions because one topic 
that also came from me as a theory why the market is giving you the 75% discount is the, the idea that the market expects more zeros like Babylon uh, on a higher level. It's uh, <laughs> do you what do you expect there? Uh, knowing the 66 companies in your portfolio, uh, is there more pain to come on this side or are you fine with like there's the overview? Yeah, yeah, seventy percent of the portfolio. I mean, seventy percent of the NAV, right, is EBITDA positive. So I mean, Babylon was EBITDA negative to the order of like, what was it, two hundred fifty million dollars per year, right? So, it's, so, so we have nothing like that in the portfolio. There are some younger companies uh, that 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 won't make it, and we've probably written them off too. But they're like very, very small in the portfolio. So the number of names will be reduced. <laughs> Uh, but it doesn't give so much financial impact. So, uh, like, like of course, Babylon did. So, so no, the, no, that fear. I understand and I have sympathy for that fear uh, being there, uh, especially if you look at us from a distance. Like you're not so focused on this. It's technology. It's long duration assets. Now the market is doing something else. So I, I have sympathy that people don't really study it closely. But if you do, if you come closer and you look. And you see that 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 is not uh, that is not uh, a good reason for this discount. And the seventy percent share might even grow in the future, or yeah, it's growing. It's growing. So then, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you very much for your time. It was very insightful, and uh, I hope next time we have some brighter topics to discuss because I had brought some harder questions as well. But uh, no. that's the time. No, no, it's great to talk to you, Tillman, and, and I think it's, uh, well, it's in these times. I mean, if you look back to, you know, buying my stock in, in January, if we, are, if we are now in like the, the, the first quarter of 2009 or something similar, in the first quarter of 2009, it was difficult to see what was going to happen. But that was also the very low point. The same if you went to the autumn of 1998. This company nearly sort of was liquidated in the autumn of 1998. But, you know, it lived another day and then the market turned, lived another day and then the market turned and then it went back up. So we're at, I feel we're in that sort of same period. It's it's uh, it's um, and so it's very important to talk in this period, too, is what I'm, uh, I'm trying to say. Yeah. A lot of investing is holding hands and talking. <laughs> uh, <Yeah>. Do it. <laughs> Great. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And bye bye to the audience. Bye.